Standard first contact protocol decrees the Federation not make itself known until a race travels to the furthest body caught in orbit around the same star as their cradle world. This practice allows species to practice interplanetary government and trade without outside influence and gives them time to get their technological sea legs, to borrow a human term, to prevent too much of a deficit compared to other races' advancement. We notice them when they reach the planet they call Saturn, and allow them to notice us when they landed on the 13th planet from their sun. To be honest, not many of us believed they would ever make it that far. Competition drives the human race, being both their greatest strength and weakness. Unlike every other star-faring species, humanity is not a unified front. Every planet they inhabit is mostly independent of the others, with the population broken into dozens of independent countries and city-states. This made first contact with them arduous and complex, since instead of dealing with one government, thousands of countries had to agree on how each planet would be represented, followed by those representatives deciding on how all of humanity would present itself to us. We waited patiently for almost an Earth decade until they presented one solitary statement. Based on the information provided by the ambassadors of the Federation, each planet's government will interact directly in what they believe are to be in the best interest of their local population. This being stated, the free states of humanity strongly recommend the Federation amend their constitution to prevent any race from attempting to interfere with or take advantage of any and all political adversity within two or more human governing bodies. The request was odd, and, since it was merely a suggestion, ultimately denied to much protest by the human ambassador. Who was this race to demand an amendment to the Federation's constitution after such a short time? Many assumed this was a ploy out of fear or desperation, at the thought of being colonised or enslaved, but then we began to see what the humans described as political adversity. The human drive to compete with one another had them in a constant state of war with themselves. Countries fought other countries, both on their planet and others. Occasional planetary wars would break out between multiple worlds, and at one point all of humanity was split in two factions, starting a civil war that lasted almost 50 cycles. Humanity turned war into an art, and we quickly realised their strange request wasn't to protect them, but rather to keep the children that only played a war out from underfoot while the professionals worked. The chaos that was humanity drove them to constantly look for ways to advance, and to our surprise they weren't actually benefited from their need of violence. They never warred with other species, instead choosing to share and trade, and no one was stupid enough to antagonise them. Until the Sadnoltons. A small planet on the edge of Sadnoltons space was inhabited by humans, and part of a small conflict with another human colony, the Sadnolton government traded with. In an attempt to expand their empire, they launched a surprise invasion and conquered the planet, claiming to want to assist their allies. No species had dared try this before, and after the dust settled, we saw something none of us had seen before. Peace among the humans. Every sentient being in the universe can tell you exactly where they were and what they were doing when they received the news. The furthest reaches of the galaxy heard the humans' weapons stop firing. A stillness fell for a single day, and by the end of the next, the Sadnolton Empire was no more. The chaos that was humanity solidified in an instant, unified against an outside enemy. Hundreds of thousands of independent countries spread across hundreds of planets, lashed out in unison, as if the humans shared one mind, and by the time the Federation was able to get a grasp of the situation, the human fleets controlled over 200 sudden Ultimate planets, and one of the morning of the third day, the humans stood before the Federation with a smile, and returned everything except for the planet they had lost, asking only for damages, and showing an old human proverb. I against my brother, us against our cousin the three of us against the world.